Welcome back YouTube. In this video, I am going to show you how to connect your Vifly buzzer to your KISS V2 flight controller, which is pretty awesome on a switch. And at nighttime, it lights up like that, which is pretty cool. So if you lose your quad, it makes it very easy to find. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so on the KISS flight controller, there is KISS V2 flight controller. There is two pads for the buzzer. You got positive and negative here, okay? So with those two pads, with the provided wire that we get with the Vifly V2, which is this right here, little unit, weighs five grams with the wire. They give you this provided wire. It's very similar to um, a um, GPS wire or anything like that so you have a positive negative and a signal wire okay so on a kiss flight controller since you have a positive and negative buzzer pad we're going to connect the yellow to the negative the red to the positive and ground to this ground pad coming off of motor three okay so we're going to use pads one two and three right here All right, so we're going to start off by, we're going to flux these pads that we're using. So, like I said, ground off of motor three and buzzer plus and buzzer minus. All right, and now that that's done, you see I pull my, my solder from underneath. I have my spool underneath. Keep it nice and neat. You don't waste anything. We're going to start off from the furthest moving closest towards us. So I'm just going to rotate this slightly just to give myself a better angle. And like always, like I say, just have yourself set up so you could just get in and get out as fast as possible. Okay, so we're gonna start with the negative pad, positive pad on the buzzer, and the ground pad on motor three signal. Okay, so there you have it. Now, as you can see, that got a little dull. That is because we attempted to hit it twice and we burnt a little more flux out of it than the other pads so you can tap it with the flux pen and then just boom all better i'm going to connect my wire here hold it like this and we see exactly how much wire we need and as you see it's we're not cutting we're not losing much so that's a good thing so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to unwind these wires up to this point okay that looks about right okay and I'm gonna mount this to my frame right now just regular 3m double-sided very high bond tape get it anywhere Amazon that was a struggle because it's not sticking all the way down on the plate there's empty spots under there but that's okay once this is on there it'll, it'll grab see that's all that's what we want all right so now that this is mounted it's nice and neat underneath the stack what we're going to do is going to measure out these wires and we're going to snip them okay so as i mentioned you have the yellow wire is going to go to the buzzer negative The red wire is going to go to the buzzer positive, and the ground is going to go right behind it. So we're going to start off by snipping this, these wires down to size. So we're going to bring the yellow wire in like this. That looks about right. I'm going to cut it on the top of the tweezers so I have a little extra. Okay, that works. Then the positive is going to be the same thing. A little bit of extra. And with the twists in the wire, if you do cut it a little short, what you got to do is unwind it a little bit and you will just gain that extra length right back. So don't panic if you cut it too short. But try to get it right on the first try. And this is where the black wire is going to go. That is your ground. Okay. So now that that is done, we are going to strip these wires and tin them. 
Okay, so like I said in the last video, if you don't feel comfortable using the snips because you can cut the wire off, all the wire, this, this, the jacket and the, the wire, if you put too much pressure, just use your fingernail. I like to use this because it's very precise. And if you're gentle enough with it, you get away with it, just like that, see? Another trick with this wire too, is if you cut it too long or too short, you could stretch or compress the jacket further down or up the wire. So if you cut it too long, let's say you cut like three millimeters off of the jacket instead of like two, like that, let's say, see how that's a little extra long? This is very soft because it's silicone jacket. You could actually just pull the jacket up a little bit. See how I just pulled that up a little bit to even it out? That's all you have to do. So don't panic and start cutting the strands off of the wire. There's no need for that. And if you cut it too short, you could actually use tweezers and grab onto the wire itself like that and pull the jacket down as well. So it goes either direction, depending on what your situation is. I'm gonna use the gel paste for this application here. It's very, very small wire. So I you can use an extra piece of wire or anything just to get a little dab of it. And all you gotta do is just touch it to add flux, just like that. Okay. And now that that's done, we're gonna tin these wires. One. Two, and three, okay. And now, like I said, we're gonna go in the order which we're working further away from, away from our work. So I'm gonna give this one twist just to get them back to where they're supposed to be. Okay, we're gonna start off with the yellow. And remember what I told you guys about setting yourself up for each shot with the solder it makes life a lot easier for you so in this instance i got the capacitor in the way here so instead of trying to fight it just rotate a little bit you know rotate it so it's it's to your liking it's obviously harder when you're working on camera because i'm trying to show you guys things but uh you know when you're doing this at home just make it so you're in a position where you don't have to juggle anything when you're about to touch your eye into your pad. It's very important. Because if you're trying to manipulate, you know, positions or, you know, whatever the case is, it's not gonna come out right. The trick is to get in and get out as fast as possible with as little bit of struggle as possible. So that looks pretty good, okay? The wires are set up to which pads their corresponding pads are. So here you have it. Okay, see how nice I'm lined up right there? Then just come in. Before you do anything, make sure you're just ready. Just touch down and boom, just like that. You see how nice that joint is? And that's all there is to it. It's that easy. Same thing, you just finagle a wire so I want them to be facing the same direction. I don't want them to be lopsided because I'm just anal like that. So we adjust it. And it's a good thing about the 45 uh, degree angle on the tweezers is you could switch from one angle to another depending on what you're working on and your location. Now you see how they dropped in there and the ground wire is literally right where it's supposed to be already. And that's not by accident. That's what you want to do. You want to set everything up so it makes your life very easy when you're soldering and just like that you're all wired up okay that brings us to the controller portion of this setup and in order to set it up on your controller i personally have the tango 2 i just have i just got it so uh i'm just setting up this model for the first time as you see it's the alien and it works like any other open tx uh platform uh I press menu and in this case, it goes to Crossfire as the first page, and then you just page, 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 until you get to mixes. And once you're on a mixes page, mine is done already, but you can see that my sixth, sixth channel is set up to SD, which is the top right switch that you press down. And it's a two position switch, down and up. It's not a three position switch. And um, that's, I have it on a two position because it's a beeper. You only need two, a two uh, action switch on that. So 
Um, if you're setting it up for the first time, which I assume you are, what you do is, in my case, I have to long press the button to edit, but you could just press the button and you get to the, you get to the mixes channel page. So this is channel six. Then you just scroll down to source, press, and you'll see it'll start to beep. Once it's, once it's flashing, then you just press the button that you want to use. And then you just, that's it. Press the button again to save it and exit out. And that's it for the control portion of the setup. Now we just connect. You can hear my beeper going off there. And I already set this up, but I wanted to do it with the computer screen to just make it a little clearer for you guys. It's very simple. You just pretty much just go to the buzzer, you select AUX2, which we just set up on a controller. And if you're using the Tango 2 as I am, and you're you know, depressing the button uh, as I am, then you set it to high. So when the button is pressed in, your buzzer will work. All right, so there you have it. That's the full setup of the Vifly V2 buzzer on a KISS V2 flight controller. This is my Alien, my new Tango 2, which I'm very excited about. Just a little run through of how I got the rest of my switches set up. The only thing I have set up besides the buzzer is obviously the arm. The arming is uh, two stage with the idle up. So the left uh, two stage button, you just press in, it arms it. You can see the motors are spinning, but there's no action on the gyro. And then the second stage is the rocker switch in the middle. And that gives you your gyro. So it's nice. You can land with just the tap of a button. And if you accidentally disarm when you're flying, you could always just rearm. Because regardless of what position your throttle is in, it'll arm. So it makes for uh, quick arming and disarming in hairy situations, and it's pretty safe. So as far as the buzzer goes, as we worked, as we uh, seen on the video, it's set up on the right um, momentary switch. Uh, well, it's not a momentary switch. It's a two-button switch, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's how it goes. Very loud and very bright, the light. So... Uh, come in handy if you ever lose your quad in a dark spot or uh, or high grass or something like that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and please subscribe if you haven't already. Take care.